This is our last full example video from chapter 9, and it is also probably one of the toughest. So it may be worth making a note for this one as well, just like with example 9F, to re-watch this video in a couple of days and see if it makes more sense or if you can pause the video sooner and try working it out on your own to make sure that it's making sense to you. Okay, so what we are going to see is that with this angled bar problem, with this 10 degree angle, unlike the two other angled bar examples we've seen so far, the chicken in a windstorm and the person on a ladder, we are not already given the appropriate perpendicular distances. We have to find them based on the angle that we're given. So let's draw the picture as usual. So we have a wall here and there is a hinge. And so just like with our drawbridge kind of example, that hinge becomes the axis. We no longer have to decide where we want to put it. And we have this angled bar. It is one meter long and it is 30 kilograms. And there is a rope attached to it about uh, exactly, rather, two thirds up, where it's, it's not a very straight rope, but we get the idea. The rope is there. We have this 10 degree angle. And we have at the end of the bar, oops, not an arrow yet. We'll see an arrow in a bit a 40 kilogram weight attached to it. And we're kind of reminded that this 10 degree angle has to match um, if those are both flat lines. So we'll start with the real picture and the forces, just like before. So it's the free body diagram of the bar. And with these forces, we can start with the ones that we feel more confident about. The rope is a tension force. That rope is perfectly sideways. And so when it is pulling away from the bar, it is doing so perfectly sideways. There are no weird components to this tension. It is a sideways force. A lot of students confuse themselves and decide that this 10 degree angle has to do with the rope itself. And that's not the case here. That is a arrow that points directly to the left. With the 40 kilogram um, block that is attached here, we have the force of gravity of that block. That's 40 times 9.8. And so that's 392 Newtons. We have the force of gravity of the bar itself. That is 30 kilograms times 9.8. That is 294 Newtons. Those forces will be used later. And now, worth noting, we no longer have to be uh, guessing which way this uh, etch hinge force in the x direction and hinge force in the y direction point. Because if we look at our free body diagram, there are currently only downward forces. And so that hinge is preventing the whole bar from sliding downwards. That hinge force in the y direction has to point up because otherwise the forces can't balance in that direction. And then the hinge force in the x direction has to point to the right. Oops, I don't want to use F, I want to use H for hinge. The hinge force in the x direction has to point to the right because otherwise things wouldn't balance um, and the tension points to the left. So just a quick note here, this particular example doesn't ask us to find those hinge forces, but they would be pretty straightforward. The hinge force in the y direction we can already do. 392 newtons plus 294 newtons is 686 newtons. That would be the hinge force in the y direction. And whatever value we get for the tension, that same number value just pointing in the opposite direction will be what we get for the hinge force in the x direction. We're not asked to do those, so I won't do them on the board, but I want us to recognize that that part wouldn't be so, so difficult for us. The part that makes this example tough is when we are trying to get the um, perpendicular distances. So let's look at what that torque direction or that torque equation diagram, 
what that torque diagram looks like. Okay, so step one with torque diagrams is to draw the bar. It is an angled bar, so we should draw an angled line. Maybe a straighter line than that, but it's good enough for our purposes. Step two with drawing the torque diagram is to choose an axis. This one's been chosen for us anytime we have a hinge, we need to put the axis at that hinge. There are two unknown forces that if we choose the axis somewhere else, we have made a drastically tougher problem for ourselves. There's no need to do that. Okay, so now let's put in these arrows. They're all up and down or side to side um, forces where they are. So if we start at the edge here, the first force we will get to is this one at the center of the bar, which is the force of gravity of the bar itself. So 294 Newtons. The next force that we get to is the rope because the rope is attached two thirds along the way and that rope points directly sideways, the tension force. And if we continue all the way to the end, then we get the 392 Newton force here uh, at the end. Now, I want us to recognize something important here. Those arrows were easy enough to put in the correct spots. The point or the part of the problem that makes this difficult is we need the perpendicular distances. We need to know what this distance is. We need to know what this distance is. And we need this vertical distance here. Now note how I did that because that's really important for us to understand. This 294 Newtons is an up and down force. We need a side to side distance to be perpendicular the way the torque needs perpendicular. Tension is a side-to-side -side force, so we need an up and down distance in order to have that perpendicular idea. It is never a guessing game for us whether we need the horizontal distance or the vertical distance. We are always looking for that perpendicular idea. Now to get these two distances, I'm actually going to, ooh, exciting, double-sided. I'm actually going to draw a couple of things um, and then we'll come back to that picture that we had before. So if we think about, um, let's start with the center of the bar. So the center of mass. The center of mass of the bar is halfway along the bar. It is 0 0.5 meters between the axis and where that center of mass is pointing. But that is not the relevant distance to us, okay? If we think back and you can rewind the video if you have not been drawing this on your page. You should always draw these examples out the way that you would do if we were in class. The force that we're talking about here, it's the gravitational force is down, which means that the distance that we care about here is this, our axis. But we have a triangle, okay? And we have this 10 degrees. And so this distance for the gravity of the bar, the distance that we care about here is 0 0.5 times the cosine of 10 degrees. So it's 0 0.5 meters times the cosine of 10 degrees is 0 0.492. Okay, I'm going to flip the board real quick to put it in. So the one that we were just looking at was this one, 0 0.492 meters. Okay. So I'm going to switch colors so that we can see on this side um, better distinguished. Now we're going to think about the tension. That tension was a sideways tension force. Along the bar, it was 2 thirds of the meter. So two thirds of the full distance, so two thirds times 1.0, which is two thirds. If it had been two thirds along a two meter bar, then it would be, you know, 1.33 meters and so on. So two thirds of a meter. We don't care about the horizontal piece anymore. 
We do care though about this up and down piece. And I'm actually going to, I won't cut this out of the video, um, but I am gonna rewrite this because if we look back at the picture on the slide, um, the angle where we can visibly see it is up here. Everything I was doing was gonna lead us to the same correct number, but I wanna match the picture um, here. So I didn't wanna get us confused. Sorry about that. So we have the picture from the slide. The 10 degrees is right here. We don't care about this horizontal distance because we have a horizontal force. This distance is the distance perpendicular, the perpendicular distance. And so for that one, the perpendicular distance, maybe it's even it's worth writing perpendicular to really hit home why we have to use the up and down distance for the horizontal force, is the 2 thirds times not the cosine, but the sine, opposite, sine of 10 degrees. So 2 thirds times the sine of 10 degrees is 0 0.116 meters. So we flip this back around. And I'm going to put it in red so that we can eat more easily match. But this is 0 0.116 meters for this tension that I'll now redraw color-wise. Okay. And then for the last force here that we have, the 392 that I'm gonna color code on both sides to be a little bit um, easier for us to follow. We need this distance here. Now, symmetry tells us that if this was halfway along, then all the way along is um, going to be double that. But I do want to just make sure that we have something where we can look back that even if that um, block were somewhere else along the bar, we can still draw a triangle based on how far it is along the bar and the angle that we're given. So it is a full 1.0 meters along the bar. We have this 10 degrees, and that is the, the direction that we're looking here. What we're looking at here is a force of gravity of the block that is an up and down force. So the perpendicular distance is going to be this one down here at the bottom. And that perpendicular distance is going to be 1.0 times the cosine of 10 degrees. And so that is going to give us 0 excuse me, 0 0.98, and we'll round that to 5. If you just doubled that, you would have gotten 0.984, and that's perfectly fine. That's, um, that's just rounding differences, and that's not a big deal. But now we can plug in that 0.985 in the correct spot here. So 0 0.985 meters. So when we look back at this then, we have those three different forces. Unlike, and I'm going to um, switch back on the slides here, unlike example 9F where we had an angled force that we broke the force into pieces to get the perpendicular force, in this current example we have an angled bar. All of the forces are the normal side to side and normal up and down. And so we need to break the distances up to get the perpendicular pieces. And that's what we did um, here on the back side of the board. It is probably worth, when you see these problems in um, assignments, it is probably worth drawing out a bunch of different triangles so that you have a clear description for yourself where these numbers are coming from. In all of these cases, we're looking for the perpendicular um, distance and so it's probably I'll just re label this the perpendicular distance is the one that we're looking for here okay so back to finishing the problem itself uh, the only color we haven't used down here is black so I'll use that this time for the clockwise counterclockwise based on this axis gravity is trying to have the bar swing downwards in the clockwise direction that's true for the 392 newtons. That is also true for the 294 newtons. 
the tension, if somebody were able to tug on that rope a lot faster, or with more force rather, with more force than what it currently has, that bar would swing upwards, and it would swing up and around in the counterclockwise direction. So when we look at torques clockwise equal torques counterclockwise, we will see that clockwise there are two um, terms here. We have the 294 newtons, which is multiplied on 0.492 meters of perpendicular distance. And to add, we add we have 392 newtons times 0 0.985 meters. So that's the whole left side. And on the right, all of that stuff is going to be equal to the unknown tension times the perpendicular distance here, 0 0.116. Okay, so that whole left side, I'm just going to plug in. So 294 times 0.492, and I add 392 times 0.985. And that whole left side is equal to 530. So this whole thing is equal to 530.8. So we can divide both sides by 0 0.116. And the tension, we can see even before we do this, the tension is going to be very large. So 4,680 newtons. And I want us to think about what that really means here. What that number means is that the tension that we've drawn has to be enormous, has to be very, very large to be able to hold up the weight of the bar where the weight actually acts and the weight of that load that is so far away from the hinge. If this were just a rope and a bar and everything, that tension might be enough to, to snap the rope. These numbers and these distances, the forces and the distances, all of this in this problem is actually really consistent with somebody who is um, like shoveling snow or picking up a 40 kilogram box by just bending over at the, at the waist, where that hinge becomes your um, hip muscles as you bend down to pick something up. Instead of using your, um, instead of using your, legs to pick it up, you are just um, bending over at that hinge. That's going to create huge, huge tensions, way more than we might necessarily expect. So we'll talk about forces and um, in muscles and torques in joints, things like that uh, in a later lecture video. But for now, that is the last fully worked example that we have for chapter nine. So I will see you in the next chapter or next lecture video, whichever comes first.